Hi everybody, it's Linnea for Ink on 3. There's a new release that just hit the shop and there are three new floral set, uh, stamp sets. I'm going to be using an Atelier ink smushing technique with the Gerbera Daisy stamp set. This is one of my favorite stamp sets. I love it because it's easy to use. The centers are dark black and then there's like little lines throughout the stamp, so it doesn't require a lot of effort to use. And you're going to see that today. So I'm starting off with three colors of Atelier Ink. Beasting Yellow, Sweet Petunia Pink, and Trinity Teal. I am going to just smush these right down on my work surface. Now you can see here that I got a little bit of transfer onto my Trinity Teal ink pad. That's no problem. I'm just going to blot that a little bit onto a piece of cardstock until that's clear. Now... There are a lot of ways to smush. I put inks down on my work surface, all three colors of ink, and kind of let them blend together. What I should have done was dip my paper directly into this. Because I'm using an acetate sheet and kind of carrying my ink back and forth, I'm getting some muddy brown colors, and you can kind of see that starting to form there. Even though these three colors are able to mix together well, there are colors that they will make that won't mix together. So orange won't mix with purple. And I'm making both colors because the sweet petunia pink and the beast in yellow are mixing together to make orange. And then the trinity teal and sweet petunia pink are mixing together to make purple. So I have a lot of mixing going on, a lot of color in my background. I still love this background, but I think that if I were to do this again, I would put all three colors down on my work surface and then smush my paper directly into it. Now, here's another way to smush. Put one ink color down on your work surface, and you can, again, either put your paper right into this puddle of ink, or you can take a piece of acetate and bring your ink over to your cardstock again. I'm just spritzing maybe once or twice with water to get those inks flowing, and then this is actually a spare stamp pocket that I have. It kind of tore down the side, so it was going in the garbage anyway, and I figured I might as well keep it to do this smushing technique before it <laughs> its use expires, I guess. Get as much use out of my supplies as I possibly can. So now I'm going into the Sweet Petunia Pink, mixing these two colors together. Look at that gorgeous corally orange color these two colors make when they mix together. It's so pretty. And I contemplated stopping here and having the pink and the yellow and the orange together. I think that would have been really pretty. But because I used the Trinity Teal on my other background, and I really wanted to show you the comparison between picking up all three colors on the acetate and picking up one at a time and selectively determining where you're going to put your ink, I wanted to show you the the difference in them so I thought that I should add in the Trinity Teal just for consistency here. So now the good thing about this technique is that see where that corally orange color is? I can try to avoid that with my Trinity Teal because I know that the blue is not going to mix well with the orange color. So I can avoid that brown color that I got on my first example. I still think that first example is pretty and I'm still going to make a card out of it but I do prefer this second method of using the individual colors. Now here's that Gerber Daisy stamp set. This is the new one. Oh, I did also add some painted black um, Atelier ink spatters to the background. Whenever I do any kind of watercolor background, I just think spatters make it look more cohesive, so I added some. I'm taking the flowers and the little like side buds and some leaves and kind of doing a rough arrangement of them on my card base. That's something I do to make sure that I'm stamping the images that I want. I ended up stamping the majority of the images from this stamp set. All six of the leaves, and I think I just left behind one or two flowers. I definitely stamped four flowers, I think, and then I ended up not using all of them, but that's okay. Whatever I don't use, I keep in the back of my stamp pocket with my stamp so that I have it next time I want to make a card. I'm going to stamp all of these images down with Blackout Hybrid Detail Ink. This is a crisp black ink, and I'm going to get that crisp black center of the daisies as well as those fine lines. They're all going to stamp beautifully. Now, I cut these out with my scissors, and you can absolutely color these images in. I have been really working on my coloring, but I still need a lot of practice, and I'm just not good at coloring, and I am fully willing to admit that that is my weakness in my craft room is my coloring skills. 
So I tend to gravitate towards cards that are easy to recreate and don't require a lot of coloring, or in this case, no coloring. All my color is going to be on the background. You could definitely color these, but because there are so many colors in my background, I didn't want to color these flowers. I thought it was best to leave them white and let the background shine. I really wanted the Atelier ink in the background to shine. And I think that if I was to color these daisies a color, like if I colored them yellow or even like a, a blue or a red or something, it wouldn't look good with the background. I think it would kind of clash a little bit. So I left them white, which is easy peasy, and it really makes both the background and the flowers stand out equally, for different reasons, but equally. I arranged the flowers and the leaves on my card the way I wanted them to be. I used a piece of purple tape to pick them all up at once, and then I added little bits of glue as well as foam adhesive at the back so that I could pop up this arrangement of flowers. Now I'm going to be grabbing a sentiment, and this is from another new Ink on 3 stamp set. This is from the Here For You 3x4 stamp. Just grabbing a couple sentiments there, and then I'm going to stamp them down onto a piece of black cardstock. And for this, I'm using the Juicy Watermark Embossing Ink so that I can heat emboss these in white. I'm making sure I'm using my anti-static powder tool so that I don't get embossing powder where I don't want it to be. I'll ink these up, and then like I said, I'll use white embossing powder to heat set these. I'm going to use a rectangle die to cut them out so that they are perfectly shaped. And then I'm just going to go ahead and use my T-square ruler and make sure that these are straight and centered-ish. I want them to be centered on that little cluster of flowers. And this is really going to finish the card. I'm going to go in with a little bit of liquid pixie dust. I keep it in a fine-tipped watercolor brush from the Ink on 3 shop. Just give it a shake. It's in there straight. I didn't add any water. I'm going to give it a shake and paint over this black sentiment strip to add a little bit of shine. These two cards are done. I hope you enjoyed this ink smushing tutorial and that you'll try this technique in your craft room. I'll see you guys soon. Bye! Thank you again very much for watching this video. If you liked this video and you'd like to see more from me, please hit that subscribe button that is on the screen now. And here are a few other videos that I thought you might enjoy.